hello everybody and welcome back Duke here and I'm excited I mean if you can't tell already we're not in Minecraft we're back with the first episode of a new game the second game on the channel Victoria 2 Heart of Darkness I'm really actually hyped so hyped it's like unbelievable it's been so long I've wanted to do this but our first episode because a lot of people probably don't know what Victoria 2 is it's going to be a tutorial. I'm not sure how long this is going to take. Oh god. I forgot how long this was. I went through the whole thing. I remember I just went through the first, like, these nine, and then, like, these two, and then I said, nah. Oh boy. I'm not doing this. But I'll go through the first uh, tutorial, the basics, and just to give everyone an idea of what Victoria 2 is. Hello everybody, we're back. Um, after that intro that you just saw where I went to the tutorial page, I recorded about 20 minutes of those tutorials. It was on like number 3 and I realized not only was it going to be far too long, but it was far too boring for you as well, I'm sure. Because I was getting super bored just reading it, reading all the stuff there. I mean, so I figured it would be super boring for you all to watch. So I've decided that you can all learn how to play Victoria 2 by watching me play it. I hope that's okay and I hope that you learn as we go along. But because I do want to help you out, I'm I figure maybe an interactive tutorial of sorts with our own game rather than a, than a tutorial by itself from all the thing from my own words, not just the tutorial script. So here we are in the screen for a normal game that we're going to start. We're going to start as Belgium, the same place, but on for us it's number 11 in the world. Secondary power, her maj HM's government, which means her majesty or his majesty's government, uh, monarchy pretty much. And it shows us we have our population of 1.04 million people, or adult males. At the start of the game, 1836, we have zero wars, allies, puppets because the game hasn't started yet. Though, as soon as the game starts, people start sending each other ally offers and everything back and forth, and you'll see that. And so, let's get started. Here we are, guys. Sorry. Um, my nose is kind of iffy, but... Like the tutorial was going to state, I'm not going to play for a few minutes. I don't know if you can actually see this, but the recording thing is like in the way, so I'm going to try and move it here a little bit. Where to move it? That is the question. I guess right there is okay. Can it? There we go. I guess that's alright. For now. So, right here, I assume you can see where my mouse is. See all these red dots? Those are capitals. We are Belgium. It is there. Right there. We have the, we have, uh, the Netherlands to the north, France to the south, and Prussia to the east. These are all the German states that can later form into the German Confederation and all of that, and then Germany. So, we are number 11 in the world. We are the 41st. These are... Here's the top left. I'll try and give you a brief rundown of everything. We are number 11 in the world, a secondary power. There are usually like 100-ish nations in the world at any given time, so... This is pretty good, 11. But number 1 to 8 in the world are great powers. Number 9 to 16 are secondary powers. And those matter for colonization purposes. For one, you see Africa. All that white is uncolonized land. And you can't colonize that until the 1870s. Due to the expansion that we're on now, Heart of Darkness. Which helped a lot with that. But only uh, great powers and secondary powers can... Uh, colonize, along with other things, of course. In the break, I also got myself a drink, because I realized I would need it talking a lot. So here we are. We're number 11 in the world. The star means prestige. It means... I don't know how to describe what it means. It means, like... In real world terms, it means, like how the world views you. 
Like, if you're super great, this awesome country, you have a lot of prestige. Makes you feel proud, I guess. I don't know. This is industrial power. It means how many factories you have and how much stuff you produce in your country. Industrial score is a measure of your... Of your level of industrialization. It is a combination of the number of factories and the total value of the goods output of your country. Military power is how much power you have between your army and your navy. And that's how much colonial power we have to colonize places. So you see, we are, and then the right numbers there are our place in the world. We have the 10th best prestige in the world, the 5th best industrial power, 41st best military. We have newspapers that we can read once they come in. We scroll around using the mouse and scroll in and out using the mouse. We can advance time by pressing spacebar or clicking the, the stop button. I'm not going to do that yet. but And then we can use these to say how fast it goes. To the right here is a map of the world. We can click to go around. British Australia, etc. There's our world in 1836. And these are all the different maps. There are like 22 of them. I mostly use the political map mode, this one right here that we're on, though there are plenty of others like terrain map mode, infrastructure. I use that occasionally just to see how advanced our um, trains and stuff are. Polit diplomatic map mode, region map mode, which says like the states if we were playing as the U.S. Pretty much. Some of them like Georgia and South Carolina are stuck together. Blech. And, and, and uh, New England. But yeah, revolt risk, revolt risk, a bunch of different things, are um, nationality, like all the people in this area are French, you know, pretty much the nationalities of all of our places, most of the U.S. is Yankee or Native American minor or Dixie. Anyways, with that being said, I mostly use the political map mode, but we usually swap. We can also use the find country or province button to find a specific country or province. Like if I'm playing as somewhere other than the US and I get and I usually use this to find a province if I get a notice about it because it's really because I have no idea where it is. For example, like if I wasn't from the US and I had no idea where Washington was and I got an update for it, I would go, "Okay, where's Washington?" Go there, click that. Oh, Washington's right there. And we can tell that Washington is the capital because of the red dot. Those are the capitals of nations. Um, so yeah, we're playing as Belgium. I don't know if they'll wage war at first or not, but usually the Netherlands wages war on us. Um, let's start, not start, but let's go over these produ these eight tabs across the top, which controls everything in the game. While I often like to compare Victoria 2 to a, like a war simulation game, it's not. It really controls a lot more than that. Diplomacy, economy, everything. So the first tab, production, pretty much says everything that we produce in our country. How many factories we have, small arms factories, how many people work in those factories. How much foreign investment we give, only great powers can give that. How much of everything we produce in our country. And how many, what our projects are, which are pretty much things capitalists start, and I can depending on what government type we have we can sometimes uh, support projects as well usually either building railroads or building factories or expanding factories um, and then even if we don't go into the whole interface of a certain tab we can see some of the important things just scrolling over them for example for the production tab we can see bankrupt factories or how many people are unemployed. Right now there are 93 unemployed craftsmen in Vlanderen. Please keep in mind, since this is a game of the world, I am probably going to, if we're not in the U.S., or even if we are, I'm probably going to butcher names galore in all of my Victoria 2 videos, but I do greatly apologize, but that's just, I pronounce things as I see them, what I assume they be, might be pronounced like. Also considering I don't know a Dutch or a Belgian accent, you know, so I don't know how things are pronounced. Next, budget. You control the, the budget of your nation with this one. 
you can increase your taxes or decrease taxes depending on the government type there's sometimes caps on this as well as tariffs you could have all your taxes up all the way up to make yourself more money if you do though and you keep it there for a long period of time your people it might have an effect later on like your people might get angry at you and start rebelling and that shows how many people get their needs and the classes of the people officers clerks clergymen bureaucrats and artisans are all middle class slavery is already um, uh, illegal in Belgium I suppose but yeah we can, can in the budget area we control taxes we control costs how much we spend on our military our navy pretty much the same thing um, construction for everything education fund administration social spending none right now military spending and see that's capped as well as tariffs which we receive nothing for at this time for some reason that's one of the most important ones that you have to keep up with there's technology you see there are um, 15, not 15, 30 tech, technologies in each tab. So 150 in total. Some The green ones are ones we already researched or that are automatically done. I will click uh, strategic mobility just for the heck of it. It's always good to keep something researching. Right now we receive 9... 9.59 research points a day based on all that stuff. 2% clergyman is optimal in your country to get more research points and clerks as well. We have a 50% literacy rate in the country. And that's pretty much all this is. Some some countries have a different set of research values like they'll have plus 5% for culture and commerce but negative 5 for navy, army and industry. You know, it's just traditional academia means everything is equal like none is better to research than another in a country next is politics another important one in here we cover depending on what government type we have Belgium has a NHM's government which is pretty much a monarchy which NHM is his majesty or her majesty because you know it doesn't say if you're king or queen whatever like we are now we can appoint our own party um, Personally, I like the pro-military places with um, state in interventionalism. Um, that kind of sucks, though. Anti-military. I hate laissez-faire. In this game, I like conservative parties, not the liberal party in the game. I'll switch to this one just because, because of the jingoism, which is pretty much like pro-military. See, so while we're in a controlling government like a a monarchy or an empire or anything of the sort, really, a presidential dictatorship, we can control the government. But if we're a republic, we have to wait for elections. Some countries even have elections where you can still choose the thing, and that just says where what people prefer. We can choose reforms. Once we get a certain amount of liberals in our upper house, we could or socialists, whatever, we can enact reforms. Slavery is already outlawed, wealth, you know, all these different things. No school system right now, so eventually in the game we'd want to boost up all of the stuff pretty much on the left side and right side, depending on what kind of a ruler you want to be, really. Some people want to be want to be a presidential dictatorship, so they might want to you know, might want to be a tyrannical country, so, you know, it just depends on the person, I guess movements that will show up once you have like rebels people like if I were to somehow beat the Dutch and annex all of them they in a couple years I might have a Dutch rebel group pop up here it'll say how strong they are and all of that decisions I can make I can't make any of them right now but they each perform different things in the game not in the sphere of influence. No more will the foreign dogs grow fat off the sweat of our people. The time has come to seize all assets owned by outsiders to be cared for by the state. Perform national perform nationalization. That's what that'll do if we choose it. If we were in a sphere of influence. If we were a secondary power, which we are. And if we had a lower 
see, we're in the United Kingdom sphere of influence, so if we had a lower relationship with, than zero with them, we could say we're leaving their sphere of influence, but then they could go to war with us. And we can release Flanders or, or Wallonia as independent nations, but we're not going to do that. So a lot in the politics tab. Next, we're on the population tab. Right now, we have 104 adult million adult males in our country. Uh, 634,000 in Vlaanderen and 411,000 in Belgian Wallonie. And basically, this just t says everything about your people. How many of them are their, what they do for work, farmers, laborers, artisans, etc. Their religion, and you can choose for states too, individually, or provinces even. Brussels, you know, you can see their workforce, their religion, their ideologies, what they they're actually going to vote for. I don't know what the huge differences here, except this is what the people vote for, whereas that's what they believe in. This is the issues that the people believe in. Protectionism, interventionalism, pro-military. And this is their nationality, Flemish, Wallonian. And then here, I don't use this a whole heck of a lot, other than seeing the militancy and the consciousness, but you can see your groups of people. Like, I have 6,000 Flemish, Christian, or Catholic aristocrats in Brussels. And I have 300 Wallonian Christian or Catholic aristocrats in Brussels. So, I mean, there's just a lot of different things. Jewish, and they have religion in the game. They have every type of population, every type of people. These are all pops. How rich they are. I don't know how to measure that, really. How many, how they're getting their life needs, etc. If they're part of any rebel factions. You know, so the pop tab is also important. If my recording button will get out of the way, we also have trade here. I don't use this a lot because the game automatically handles trade most of the time unless you want it to do otherwise. But it's way too confusing for me, so I just leave leave it to do its own thing. But this says like the world how the world is trade wise, if things are in high demand, how much they cost to buy or sell, pretty much all that stuff. I'm not really good with it, so I just leave this tab to its own but if we scroll at, like at the top bar we can see what our top three exports and imports are diplomacy is one of the most important tabs in the game as well we can see these eight countries here are the great powers of the world right now the united kingdom is first the usa is in last that score where my mouse is 212 that's the overall score for the united kingdom between their prestige their industrial power and their military power, 212. That's why they're number one in the world. Number two is 162 with Ru in Russia. If Russia was to get 213 total power, they would become the number one. And over the game, countries overlap each other, get kicked out of the great powers and replaced. It happens. But for right now, they are the most, pretty much the strongest countries in the world. And they have allies and these are all the countries of the world. I use these tabs. This sorts how the ranking people have for prestige. The UK is number one, France is two, etc. Industrial power, military rank, or overall rank. And then you can all, I can also sort my relation with any of these countries by clicking sort by relation. I have negative 15 relation with those countries. And then not great relations with anybody except the UK and France, really. These are the great powers, and it says how much influence they have on a country. I can't show you what influence does, because I'm not a world power, but pretty much it gets people to join your sphere of influence, which means you can trade more with them, and you're kind of out. it gives you a better chance to become allies with them and stuff like that. Now, if you're not a great power, and, and they're trying to sphere you, there's nothing you can really do to get rid of them, other than lower your relations, or enact that event saying you want to leave their sphere of influence. You can show any wars going on by clicking that tab. And right now we have the Ottoman re restoration of Tripoli. The Tripoli is always lose. And the Texan War of Independence. Usually they bring the United States in and they win. As is true in history. Even though, uh, yeah, I guess that's when that happened. It was 1836 when the Texans went to war. The Mexican-American War. But, yeah, also at the beginning, it's pretty cool. Texas is, a, is its own country. I'm not from Texas, but I think it's still pretty cool. Even though, as I said, usually 
they win the War of Independence, and then there's an event that lets Texas join the United States, and they usually do that. So Texas usually doesn't live for very long because they join the U.S., but it's still cool. You can see who's winning the war. What That's the total military power for each side. And then if there's more than one person, it'll list more than people. It lists their war reasons. They want to annex Tripoli, and they want to annex Texas. And if we, Texas or Tripoli had war goals, they would show there. This is the screen you go to when you're in a war as well, because you can just click Tripoli. Like, let's imagine that was us. We'd click add war. Oh, we'd click add war goal against them if we could, or declare war, justify war, call ally, form alliance. This is where we can do a lot of stuff. We can form alliances here. We can increase our relationship with Tripoli, for example. We could do increase relations, but we don't want to right now. War subsidies to pay that help help pay for their war, which is useless because we know they're going to lose. And so, really, with this, I just right now we there are 131 countries in the world because of all the Chinese substates and all the German states as well. And then there's no crisis active right now. Let's see. Nobody's trying to justify a war, so there's nothing here. And then, apparently, with the countries overall, you can also sort by continent. This video is already 20 minutes, but the other one was 20 minutes, and we didn't cover that much. I'm trying to go as fast as I possibly can while showing you accurate information of what I know to be true. You can also sort by country, just Asia, or just our allies, or just our enemies, or just our just people in a sphere of influence or in our sphere, I guess, which is the British sphere. Our neighbors. Oh, I didn't actually notice that was a thing. Neighbors. That's cool. Asia, North America, you know, all this stuff. Hawaii is also a country at the beginning of this. And there's no crisis active, but when there is, the great powers have to deliberate over it. it Braunschweig over here we get little notices that aren't too important and we can organize what countries, we can filter what countries we see notices from. Like, I guess we're getting it from some of the German states. Braunschweig entered a military alliance with Prussia. Braunschweig is one of the German states, so it's not too surprising. This thing is used a lot for everything, pretty much. Just an overall rule about things being built, our armies, our navy. And then, also in the Diplomacy tab, that shows things we can colonize, the crisis, used to countries we can sphere if we're a great power, um, and diplomacy points. Those are important. Once you hit nine diplomacy points, it doesn't build anymore, so we want to spend them before they hit nine. Or what's used for all the di diplomatic stuff, such as increased relations. See, it will cost two of our three diplomatic points. We use those to for all this stuff, so they're important. Usually great powers and secondary powers are much faster than tiny places like Hawaii. You know, they gain like 0.2 per year or something like that. 0.2 a month, I don't know. And then lastly, the military tab. We have no generals right now or else they'd show here. We have auto-create leaders and auto-assign leaders for general and admiral. We have one navy with three ships and four um, units. Four, br I don't know what they're called, four brigades with three units in each. For example, the 1st Infantry Division. I know that's not exactly what it says, but that's just what I'm going to say it is. Now, for Division, it has no leader, because we have no leader right now available. They're stationed in Brussels, or that's where they're located at. There are 12,000 total men. The green bar says their organization. It usually rebuilds after a battle, how organized the whole force is. The orange is strength, how many people there are and how like if they're ready for a fight and that also slowly rebuilds after battles that says what they are they're soldiers from Namor that's one of the things I dislike about the game there has to be three at least three thousand in a certain province that are soldiers for them to join or be viable for a we have 14 total brigades or 13 we out of a possible 14 we can mobilize four brigades which are just citizens that we can mobilize in the event of war. Three out of ten ships, three out of ten possible ships, and officers, whatever. I don't actually know what that one does. So, this, These bars say how many total units we have. We have three 
infantry units, one cav one um, artillery unit, and zero cavalry units. This green bar here says how many supplies they're getting of that they need. All the supplies they need: ammunition, small arms, artillery, canned food, and we pay twelve. Twelve dollars a day to pay for the supplies for that one unit. We can split the units up by clicking that and then moving over whatever units we want and then clicking close and it'll have two units. We're not going to do that. Or we could click disband unit and get rid of all those units. We're not going to do that. Now what we're going to do, we're going to click play on slow. It, it can go up to five. See, five is super fast with the days. You see, those are all, a lot of these I just skip over. I'm like, eh, who cares? So right-click and get rid of them all. If we're not allied, who are we allied with? I want to break our alliance with the United Kingdom. I can't, we're not even allied with them. Are we? Um, we're not allied with anyone, so. Once the Dutch ally with the Germans or something, they'll probably attack us. Can I wage war on them? I just want to show some... Yeah. I'll fast forward here until the Dutch attack us. We're going to reduce the... See, with this party, apparently, the taxes are ma minimized there. The Netherlands waged war on us, so it paused. When you hear that noise, it means some... And you see, now their flag is up here because we're at war with them. Let's not ask the United Kingdom for help. We actually have no allies, so... Actually, our money is severely lacking because we're spending so much on military performance. We're spending 139 total, so we're getting negative 30 a day out of our 4,000. What we want to do is reduce this. I don't know if we're actually going to be able to win this war or not. I usually turn naval most of the way down because I, I don't use navy nearly as much as required. See, now we're doing a lot better. Negative 48 instead of like 100 and something. But what we're going to do... For war, we can take control of our units, and we want to beat the Germans. Th they apparently have no help. I don't want to leave Brussels undefended, but I'm going to. And for this example, the British aren't our enemies, so we can go through this water. We are going to load up this ship, these units, by clicking the load this unit onto a transport fleet, because these three ships are transports. So, we load them there. We send them out to Dog or Bank or whatever this is. Yeah. These guys. Oh, the United Kingdom joined us and Prussia joined them. Now, this is going to be a real war. Oh, man, they're going to crush us. Oh, oh, oh the Prussians are going to crush us. Oh, boy. Maybe a triple. But that's okay. That is okay. Now we're here. Oh, let me show you that real quick. That button. Now we have to unload our troops. You see, we can't land on the enemy land in their ports. So what we have to do is go in water that touches their ports. You see those lines? That's the border. And we have to click can carry weight. It says can carry zero weight, but that's because there's three in parentheses, meaning we're already holding three units, which is the max, one per ship. If we had two more ships and just the three units, it would say can carry two parentheses three weight. So we just click that button and then right click where we want to land. Or we'll land on Rotterdam, Rotterdam, I think. And so we're going to watch. The Prussians are probably going to crush us, but why, why are we going so fast? The Prussians are probably going to crush us. Let's sit here. If they, Yeah, they reached us. So I paused. You can use this bar below your unit to determine. You can, you can just like click this unit as well to determine the battle. Oh. I guess I that bar unit said how it's going, but you can click the the battle itself to show how things are going. That's the level of organization and the level of men on each side. We're severely outnumbered, so also in the battle you can see Prussia has 26, we have 8. They're it's because they're winning. Ours is just infantry, and they have a surplus of everything, so they're probably going to beat us pretty easily. And the thing is, I don't know how often it is, but there's like a random dice roll from 1 to 9, along with the extra factors that, that determine battles.
We'll see. I think we're going to lose here, but that's where we were scheduled to go. They're walking over to Rotterdam as we speak. Can we win this? Probably not. I'll speed it up a little bit. I can't retreat either. I would retreat if I could, but I don't know how retreating exactly works. Because our men are getting uh, d obliterated. But that's okay. We lost. We All of them died. We got 9,000 casualties. We killed 1,600 of them. But that's okay, because this is just a tutorial. The Brits are fighting the Dutch in this harbor, which is good for us. We're, we're actually beating over here. We're getting beat there. We'll send our units to help them there, I guess. Even though they don't really need it. We can't help them too much. Can we run from here? No, we can't. 20 versus 4 see how they're different and that's the unit formation I have nothing to do with that now that we're here let's see if we can raid Amsterdam and take it for ourselves probably not because they're gonna surround us but we're certainly gonna try we lost that other battle we lost all of our men somewhere else oh they finished them off that's okay we're gonna go up here and well we're blockading them here and the the Brits are blockading them there, so that also helps war score. We're at 30 minutes already, but I'm just going to finish this war, and that'll be the end of the tuto my so-called homemade tutorial. Now, while we're doing this, let me explain these little buttons up here. I explained some of it, but I forgot to mention in the population tab, that little flame, that is a flame. They're completely wrecking us there. We're trying to take uh, Amsterdam. The British troops are coming in, but they're not fast. Oh, let, that's a perfect example. Let me show you the diplomacy tab. Show wars. Dutch restoration of order to the Belgian provinces. They're trying to annex us. And Prussia is helping them. But the United Kingdom is on our side. They have more men overall, but they're currently losing for some reason. Because of our blockades over the Netherlands. But their occupation of our land is plus two war score. You see, the plus two and the negative five are war score, war percent. That's why they have negative two right now. Other wars are going on, that's fine. And our technology is still slow. It'll say when it's ready to go, but... As in some... Excuse me. In some governments, we can open factories and subsidize, and that's usually what I like to do. Just um, open all, subsidize all. And, well, we're about to take Amsterdam, which should give us some very good war score. After that, I will go... Actually, I'll just leave my men there. If they die, they die. Actually, let's try and take more land. <laughs> But up here on the top at the population tab, there's that neg there's zero out of two. The British are getting destroyed, by the way. All those men are going to go right. F they're coming for me now. Let them come. Yeah, they're coming. We're dead. But I'll pause. The negative, the, the zero out of two is our national focus, which I guess we get one per million or one per so many hundred thousand people living in our country. And what we do with that is we can encourage railroads. We can encourage things such as railroads, immigration, what kind of factories capitalists, um, what kind of cap factories they, they pay for, what kind of party loyalty the people in, our, in that state have. This is per, like, state in the game. Even though they call that um, province, they, they don't call them states, they call them provinces. And then that's the country as a whole. Or we can encourage what jobs people have. They're 20% more likely to have that job. And that's actually very helpful. So, we use that. Like, we can encourage clergymen here. Because there are only 1% of clergymen. So let's encourage clergymen in both. And they'll appear on the bar. Let me show you. Right here. 
It shows where our armies are, what, if they're in battles or not, where our navies are, and then the national focus. And what the percentage is of people there in that job. And then the little flame, 1.39, states the militancy of our population, the average militancy. And that's a bad thing. You want to keep that down as low as possible. Because that means how ma angry people are, or how likely they are to rebel. You never really want that to get too high. If you get up to like 8, you're almost guaranteed to have rebellion everywhere. And consciousness... I mean, I don't know why. I, I don't mind raising consciousness, although supposedly it's a bad thing. I don't know what it really changes, but I try to keep it somewhat low. It's not nearly as important as the militancy to me, though. And then there's nothing I can do to raise our money other than lower our our military spending to 50. And we're still going to be out outgunned here. Might as well lower these because we're probably going to die anyway. So There we go. Gain some money back. We're going to get shrecked here. Oh, we won a naval battle because the Brit British ships were there, but we lost here. We're trying to retreat, and we did, but the British are right on our tail. You see... Retreating to wherever that is, Hanover. We, we're we're out of organization and our strength is at thirty percent, so we're definitely done for. See, we're nine hundred out of a, a three thousand man unit is toast. Are they coming for us or not? No, they're not. Nice, they're going to capture their capital again, though. Now we lost all of our navy. So you see, this is a bad example. We're probably going to die here. It's not necessarily a bad example, it's just what happens. Um, and you see, by losing battles and stuff, we also lost all of our possible brigades, and we lost our ships, etc. The British are coming in big. Look, they're mobilizing their whole army, and their gigantic navy, by the way. They're number one in the world, so. And then if we scroll out, we can see where they're occupying our land. So, yeah. And of course, their stuff, Tripoli, is being occupied. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, ho. France has intervened to join our side of the war. Oh, my gosh. That's actually really cool. You see? Let me show you how that works. In wars, um, we just want status quo. France wants that. You see those pluses? If you're a great power and you're friendly with the country, we must be, like, friendly comes from the sphering thing. You have, like, neutral, cordial, friendly, and then in your sphere. And for us... Oh, opinion, yeah. Oh, we're not a great power. Okay, um... I don't know. Whatever. Um, France... See, we are friendly with France. So, therefore, they intervened on our behalf. The, U the UK could join just because we're in their sphere, but France was friendly with us, so therefore they intervened on our behalf, and that added the, st the goal status quo. You can only join if you're friendly with a country and there's they have no conflicting war goal. And so France joined on, on our behalf, so look at this. This is just, forget our men. Our men are going to die, I have no doubt. And there goes the last of our military. We lost. We have no military left. But look at this. The Brits are just rushing in there. And we're going on the fastest speed. I usually don't go this fast in games. So so it's not going to be nearly as fast as this. I usually go slower and pause all the time. So it might be boring. The French are fighting the Germans. Also, for those of you that don't know, since we're playing in 1836, Prussia is eventually evolves into See, so Prussia eventually turns into Germany, and now Germany, I guess, takes out this area right there. I really hope you can see half of this, but oh, our first event: Hendrik Conscience publishes Die Lamps Lilo. I don't know. Hendrik Consch Conscience 
1812 to 1883, or 18, yeah, 1883, the most popular Flemish language novelist of the 19th century, published one of his two masterpieces, De Vlaams Lu, The Flemish Lion. The other was De Lotling, the story of the opposed Flemish population that stood up against the French oppressor in the Battle of Golden Spurs was quickly adopted by the Flemish movement and is a symbol for Flemi Flemings even today. And then some of them only have one option like this. It just, it's, it's really like historical. It'll also tell you. It like gives you a historical lesson kind of thing. It tells you about important people and hit events like this and then we gain five prestige all Belgian p people that are Flemish will gain negative will lose two consciousness that's what the red stands for oh no they gain two consciousness and the red is saying that that's a bad thing but I don't really think it is and since the it were in 1837 on January 1st every year you get your upper house rearranged we got we lost seven percent liberals and you know that happened. So I'm just gonna watch until the end of this war, playing on five speed just to show you. Let things happen, I suppose. This is what war is like too. The germ you rush in, you try and occupy places, and war is a little bit more complicated. But you'll understand that when we go go to war. I'll explain that a little more. This is just kind of my basics. It's 30 minutes long or so, so far, but that's not as nearly as bad as like the hour and a half that I was going to have to do under the main tutorials. And hopefully this is, hasn't been as boring. Hopefully you've understood this. I mean, this is coming from someone who, who's played it, who's understand, who understands everything that I've said pretty much. So if you don't understand something that I've went over, you know, if, if, some, if I skimmed over something too fast and it doesn't make any sense to you, let me know, and I'll try and explain it better in the comments. Um, an age of liberalism. While Napoleon and his armies have been defeated, the fundamental ideas of the French Revolution have not been. In Germany, the old crowns of the Holy Roman Empire have been wrought to naught, and the feudal contracts of old replaced by Napoleonic civil codes. Everywhere in Europe, in coffee houses and universities, the ideas of liberalism, political f reform, freedom of speech, and the rights of peoples rather than of monarchs are proving again the old proverb that there is no stopping an idea whose time has come. Minorities long yoked under, the, under crowns and scepters are waking up to the realization that fate is theirs to make, and across faraway oceans the riches of Africa and Asia beckon. As dust settles on Waterloo, Europe stands again at the beginning of a new era, an age of liberalism. We can expect increased liberal activity in the coming years. And then that just says... The, the game usually ends on December 31st, 1935, but in the files I can manually increase it to so it'll go to 1999. But it usually stops at 1935 because that's kind of like the end of the the uh, Victorian era, quote unquote. But 1999 just gives it more game time. It doesn't really change anything, and it doesn't have events after 1935, like not historical things like oh the, the Vietnam War or things like that, but there are mods that you can download that have stuff like that, and I very well could in the future. And then, so, yeah, it tells us the results. And we just won. Do you hear that noise? All the British troops are gray because they ended the war. And Prussia accepted the peace offer from Fa France. Status quo, which pretty much means we won. They left us alone. And so I think, oh, and two newspapers, see? So they have newspapers you can also read. Prices Rise, Argentinian Research Complete, uh, the USA, oh, they won the Texan War of Independence, Unitarianism in, in America, that's the novel we just read about, Argentina Goes to War, War Between Netherlands and Belgium, and lastly, Lip Det Detmold, one of the German states, Relations. And so it just gives you little tidbits of information like every month or every couple months about things going on in the world. So it's it's nice to skim over, that's for sure. Something sometimes you can find some funny stuff in the newspapers that don't aren't really relevant. You see there's Russia and North America, I think that's cool. The Texas won the in the uh, revolution and or they're against Mexico and they joined the United States. 
this is what the world looks like pretty much at the time of 1836. But yeah, so that's going to be it for me, guys. That was my little tutorial as Belgium. Here we are. We're going to start a game soon as the United States of America. Just because it's one of the staples. It's a great power from the beginning, so it's got things kind of easy. And, I, and, of course, I live there, too, so that's nice. But I hope you enjoyed this, this small tutorial of mine. I hope that prior to going into watching these videos, that now you understand it a little more that you understand a little bit of the inner workings of the game and things like that see now they have their everyday needs so I don't mind taxing them out we might want to lower our taxes here re-raise our taxes here because you know we have some money to spare and we have no military that's why we have so much money I just realized that too but that's fine so yeah I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I hope I helped you understand the game a little bit better if not, if you're still confused about things, feel free to ask me in the comments and I might be able to help you out. Help you understand things a little bit better before you go off and watch series that I make on Victoria 2 as, you know, no matter what country I play or what I'm doing, you know. I'm sure you could watch them without seeing a tutorial, but I was hoping that a tutorial would help you all understand it a little bit better, basically. So you're not so confused about every little thing that I'm doing and I, that I understand, whereas you're on the other end, like... What did you just do? Why does that matter? What, huh? So, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed. This has been Victoria 2. Tutorial with Duke. And I will see you all next time.